okay, what we're going to do is uh, halt the, the content we were talking about before spring break. We're going to pick up right with chapter 7 with the normal curve or the normal distribution and go directly from there. So the, the, the topic we're talking about here is called the normal distribution. We're working with the normal curve. Now, the normal distribution is a curve. Some of you may have encountered this in maybe another course, maybe a psychology course or a sociology course or a business course. Sometimes this is called a bell curve because the shape of the curve looks somewhat like a bell. Um, there is a function that describes this and all sorts of theoretical uh, foundation behind it. We're going to gloss over that. But what we have is a curve here, uh, and there are certain facts about this curve. Number one, the curve is asymptotic to the x-axis in both directions. So in, in theory, at least, this curve never actually touches the axis, uh, never actually touches the axis going off in that direction. This is used to measure certain phenomena that exist in, in the world. If you measure adult female height, and if you measure the entire population of all adult female heights and plot them out on a, on a graph, this is what that would look like. There would be many, many people in the middle. The higher, taller and taller you go, there would be fewer and fewer of them. The shorter you go, there would be fewer and fewer of them. So you can think of this as the height of the curve above the axis corresponds to the number or the 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 the, the the quantity of the population that is in that region. So, uh, for ordinary heights, that's where most of the data lie. For unusually tall heights, that's where less of the data falls. And for unusually small heights, that's where less of the data falls. That's why we call them unusual, or these are the normal heights, and then these are not normal. Uh, there are certain facts about the normal distribution that come into play. The first is this. This is one of the key ideas. Probability. We use this curve to find probability of uh, values in a population. Um, and our definition of probability now is something new. In fact, this now becomes the overriding definition of all the probability we're going to be finding. Probability is defined to be area under the curve. What that means is this. If we have, let's say, an, a value here A and a value here B, and we want to find the probability that a value from the population is between A and B. So this is the probability that a value from the population is between A and B. That's the same thing as saying I want to find the probability of obtaining a data value in that interval. The probability is defined to be area under the curve. Any time from here on out, when we say probability, what we're saying is area under the curve. So if you are asked to find probability, that means you're being asked to find area under the curve. Or if you are given probability, that means you have been, at, you have been given area under the curve. What we mean by that is this, for the probability that x is between a and b, the probability that x falls in this interval is given by, this is the procedure. You erect a vertical line at a, a vertical line at b, and we find the area of that region The area, surface area of that region is the probability of obtaining a value that lies in this interval. So we need to f uh, learn or figure out a mechanism for finding that total area. Now, because of that statement, there are certain consequences that come into play. One of our basic rules of probability is this. We know that the probability of a certain event must equal 1. 
the probability of a certain event is equal to 1. We know that if an event must occur, the pro that's the same as saying the probability is 1. Well, if this is human female height, then we know that the probability that a person's height is between negative infinity and positive infinity, we know that is a certain event. We know the probability that the person's height is between negative infinity and positive infinity. We know that probability must be 1. But probability is area under the curve. So what does that mean? That means that the total area under the curve, the total area under any of these curves, is given to be 1. If this is in inches, it's in 1 square inch. If this is in feet, it's 1 square feet, foot. So the total area is 1. The total area under this entire curve is 1. That matches our rule we had from the very start of studying probability that in any experiment, the total probability is equal to 1. So the total area under the curve is 1. If you want to find the probability of lying in an, uh, in an interval, then that area is given to be the, the, that probability is given to be the area under the curve above the interval. Since the total area is 1, that means any small piece of that must be a value less than 1. And so that matches our understanding that the probability of any event must be a value between 0 and 1. It's clear that surface area can never be negative, so probability can never be negative. That matches our uh, rule from probability before. Uh, the probability must be a value between 0 and 1, and the total probability must equal 1. So this understanding of probability is equal to area under the curve matches our understanding of the basic probability rules that we've talked about so far.